In a countdown to civilization's number one threat, can it really destroy us? I don't want to be around for that day. They couldn't see it coming. Until now. I'm worried about the next asteroid. These are the things that can render us extinct. I'm not worried about the black hole crumbling Earth. I'm not even worried about the gamma ray bursts. I'm worried about the next asteroid. The average handgun fires a bullet at approximately 1,000 feet per second. The average asteroid travels more than 60 times faster. And when a large enough one of these cosmic cannonballs hits a planet, the effects are catastrophic. Look at the moon. Every night it comes out to remind us that on cosmic scales, the universe is violent. The universe can be catastrophic. We have a polite word for them, they're the near-Earth objects. But really, these are the things that can render us extinct. They map and name every asteroid they find, and so far they've located more than 100,000. One was discovered recently, the end of 2004. Fine, it was a new asteroid. Who cares? Until you start plugging in the orbital parameters into your computer. You plug those in, and then you watch where it goes. You can project forward where you expect to find this thing in the future. You know what we found? This asteroid, on Friday the 13th, April 2029, will come close enough to Earth to dip below our communication satellites in orbit around Earth. This asteroid Very called a noticeable chance, uh, one in a few thousand, that it will then strike the Earth in 2036, actually on April 13th again. If Apophis does hit the Earth, it would be devastating. It would create a tsunami hundreds of feet high that could race across the ocean at supersonic speeds. It's big enough to create the worst damage to life on Earth in recorded history. While the impact could wash away large parts of California, Apophis's Earth will be in the sights of a much bigger asteroid, one big enough to wipe out civilization entirely. So what is humanity doing to address this deadly threat? The number of people worldwide who are working actively on this problem is enough to staff one shift at a McDonald's. There is no spacecraft yet, not even a blueprint. Fail, scientists would know decades in advance the moment of impact, leaving each of us to live with the knowledge of the exact day our world was going to come to an end. There'd probably be a lot of people who were, uh, you know, sort of, well, let's party. We don't have much time left. There'd be other people who say, well, I'm going to spend my time praying. Uh, there'd probably be other people who were, you know, determined to survive and, you know, would go and try to find some way to optimize their chances. As our expiration date grew nearer, governments might collapse and the money they back might become worthless. And society would have to discover a new set of rules. I think as we get closer, as that, that sand of time runs out of the hourglass, it'll be much harder to enforce the rules and to, to continue the behavior that we had up to that time. How would you behave if you knew the date of your death? Would you go to work, pay your bills, mow your lawn? As the final days approached, would our lives descend into chaos, or would we band together and look for something more? I think what's going to happen is if we see this, this asteroid coming, and we're in a situation where we're not really sure what to do, we're going to, we're going to look for love. One day, all of those left on the surface would wake up and know that it was the last day. Then the last hour, and then the last minute. I like what they always show in Hollywood as the asteroid comes, people hear it and they look up and they see this flaming ball moving. These objects are moving 10, 15 miles per second. That is hypersonic. You're not going to hear it, you're not going to see it. It takes it a few seconds from when it first hits the top of the Earth's atmosphere to when it actually touches down. During those few seconds, it glows not red hot, not yellow hot, white hot, getting up into violet hot. And that is so hot that if you were anywhere on Earth in the big circle of uh, maybe a thousand miles diameter, where you could actually see this thing coming down, the heat and light coming off of it would just burn you to death immediately. Then it hits. And it starts digging the crater. 
takes a long time for a big crater to form, maybe a minute, as the Earth, what you think of as solid rock, gets splashed out by this enormous impact. There would be massive tidal waves and earthquakes, but the worst part would be the gigantic mushroom cloud of debris that would reach all the way into space. An asteroid that size is large enough to thrust large quantities of Earth's crust into the atmosphere. Within as little as an hour, even people on the opposite side of the planet would begin to feel the effects of the impact. You look up at the sky and you, you might see a few shooting stars. Even as daylight, you might see a few shooting stars. Quickly thereafter, you see like 10,000 shooting stars per every square centimeter, or several tens of thousands per every square inch. And the entire sky, instead of just being little streaks of shooting stars, would flash up into a rosy red glow, which would look and feel like someone had shut you into a soft cleaning oven being clean. The falling debris would burn up in the upper atmosphere, creating a layer of fire that would blanket the planet. 60 miles below the surface of the Earth would spontaneously ignite into a worldwide firestorm. If there were any survivors, they would emerge to find the planet pitch black, enveloped by a thick layer of ash in the atmosphere. After several months, it starts to become possible to see again. So you go outside and, you know, what you would see is an, an environment totally denuded of all vegetation and everything flammable. It looked like a very alien, um, desert-like environment. The sulfuric ash from the firestorm would drop the ocean's pH level to that of battery acid, turning most of the earth into an uninhabitable wasteland. I think if I was told that an asteroid was coming to Earth and was going to wipe us out. <laughs> Quit work. I don't think it is real. Does global warming exist or is this just a liberal scare tactic? There's no scientific consensus about what causes global warming or how it will affect our lives. Africans who are pretending it's not happening. It's a hoax. A total hoax. A total hoax. It's an outrageous lie. The illusion of a debate has been purchased with millions of dollars a year spent by a few of the largest who want to fool and confuse the American people. For decades, they were able to purchase these quasi-scientists who would say things for money. Well, can you say that you don't believe or there is no conclusive proof that cigarettes are harmful? I would say that. 